Good morning, everyone. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the 16th edition of School of Tomorrow events, Guardians of the Future, Shaping Tomorrow with Generative AI. The nonprofit SOT event series was launched by Beacon House in 2000 to engage global communities in conversations that shape the future of schools and societies. I would like to thank Google for Education, the lead sponsor for SOT 2023, and their partner, Tech Belly, our titanium sponsor, UBL. Other key sponsors include My Backpack, MK Books, Allied Bank Limited, Habib Bank Limited, Bateen, and Interwood. We also thank our SOT supporters, including Paramount Books and Nestle Park Pure Life, who have contributed to this year's event. My name is Sadia Chant, and I'm branch head at Beacon House F74. Please take a moment to note these important housekeeping points. Please ensure your si cell phones are on silent. In case of emergency, the exit point is at the back. Please stay calm and follow instructions. Please use the SOT app to scan the QR code for Q&A and feedback. Share your thoughts on social media using the hashtag Guardians of the Future and SOT 2023. If you need assistance, our ushers are here to help. For questions, please either use the flashcards provided by the ushers or use the mobile app. The panel, dis uh, sorry, this is a, a workshop that we'll have from Ms. Uh, Muriel Summer, so I'd like to introduce her now. Ms. Muriel Summers, an award-winning principal and global ambassador from Franklin Covey's Education's Le Leader in Me, she led the original Leader in Me school, A.B. Cobbs Elementary, for over two decades. She's best-selling co-author and a speaker at international and local education conferences. Muriel is also a proud mother and a new grandmother. Congratulations, Ms. Muriel. I would like to welcome you to the SOT 2023, so let's hear from her now. Thank you. I am so honored to be here with you all this morning to share our story of school transformation, which is entitled Creating Cultures of Love, Happiness, Leadership, and excellence. This is my family, and I love to start a presentation off because I want you to know me. Um, my son and my daughter are the reason that I'm standing before you today. When I was assigned the principal of A.B. Combs, and we'll hear this story in a few minutes, but it was the lowest performing school in our state. And I had to trans, I was given the responsibility of transforming that school. At the same time, my marriage was falling apart. And so this work is so important to me because it impacted my life not only personally, but professionally as well. So I thought when my son was five and my daughter was seven at the time, that one thing I could control was creating a school that was worthy enough of them attending. So they were my why behind why A.B. Combs is a school that it is today. When you build a school, when you transform a school based on what you would want your own children to have, it takes you to a level of passion that's indescribable. So that was my why then, and this is my why now, my granddaughter. And I have another granddaughter on her way in March of 2024. So now they're my why. Because you see, at 67 years old, I should be slowing down a little bit, don't you think? <laughs> Instead, I'm so, I feel such a sense of urgency to do what is right for our children all around the world. So to think even a year ago, I would be standing in Pakistan 
delivering a message to the most outstanding educators you would find anywhere. It's like a dream come true for me. So thank you. We are now at a point where we must educate our children in what no one knew yesterday and prepare them for a world and prepare our schools for what no one knows yet. This whole conference has been about something that is very foreign to me. So how are we preparing our children to embrace this very rapidly changing world, a world that's going to be a lot about artificial intelligence, and how do we help them make the right choices, the best decisions, with a toolkit that will guide them through the ever-changing world in which they live? So our objectives for our short time together is to talk about what is culture? What role do you play in your roles as educators in creating a positive school culture? What does the leader of me school look like, sound like, and feel like? And how can you work within your circle of influence to create the culture that you want? The culture of a school has far-reaching impacts on every single aspect of your organization. Culture is everything. And until you have the culture right, you will never reach the levels of excellence that you're looking for. So what is culture? Turn and talk to your neighbor and give a definition of what you think culture is. And then I'd like to have a mic circulated. We're going to spend two minutes on this because we don't have a lot of time. What is culture? I should hear you talking right now. What is culture? Yes. Hello. Hello. Whatever they have done for our parents, our society, everything surrounding us, that's culture. Excellent. Another thought or an idea on your definition of culture. Thank you. May we have a microphone here? Thank you. Um, culture is actually the experiences from our childhood, um, that, uh, those that have been influenced by our parents, by the society, by the environment, and like by our religious beliefs also. Okay, thank you. Another definition of culture right here on the... F can I... Um, yes, can someone please okay, I have assist microphone. us with the microphone? Um, for me, culture is the environment which you create. The environment which you create, whether it is society or your home or your school. So the environment which you create is your culture. Wonderful. Let's take a couple of more and then we're going to move on. We have some gentlemen in the back as well. Thank you. Hello. Would you please stand? Thank you. So everyone can see you. Hello, everybody. Culture for me is a way of life. It's a personality rooted from the values of a person. Okay, great. Gentlemen, in thank you for participating. Uh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Is that dynamic process of experiential learning from our surrounding? Exactly, thank you. Excuse me. Yeah. So, yes, and yes, one yes, more. Yes. Oh, yes. Our living trend. Our trend to live in this, yes. Thank you. And here. And we'll take these last two. So I think it's a very broad term, which uh, talk, includes everything from ethics, principles, modes of behavior that are transferred from generation to generation, and particularly to um, respective areas, and um, at times followed blindly also. However, um, it's respected uh, um, generally uh, in particular areas. 
Thank you so much. We'll take one more for time's for, sake. For me, I think it's passing your traditions and also a maybe a, a mindset of a state too. Oh, perfect. So for the, thank you all so much for contributing. You're exactly right. It's a set of beliefs. It's a set of norms, expectations. It's a feeling that you have in terms of when you walk into a school. So A.B. Combs, 25 years ago, was the lowest performing school in our um, district, one of the lowest performing in the state of North Carolina. We faced many challenges. We had children from over and continue to have over, children from over 68 countries, which was a gift. At the same time, how did we create, a, how would we go about creating a school culture that honored such diversity? And what a gift that was, but it was also an opportunity that we had never had before. We also had, let me just ask, are you controlling it from here? Is this clicker? Yeah. Okay, so please click. Okay, thank you. So we faced these incredible challenges. We had many random acts of improvement going on. And I want you to think of your school and think of all the things you have going on. Because you see, we thought more was better. More is often not better. What you need to do is to find what are the things that work. Usually three important, what we call wildly important goals. Because when you can focus on just a few things, you will make incredible progress. If you're trying to fix 16 things, nothing is going to get fixed. So every organization, your school right now, how many of you are in a schoolhouse? Would you raise your hand? Okay, wonderful. Your schoolhouse, whatever results you're getting right now, is because it's perfectly aligned to get the results it's getting. If you're not where you need to be, you need to step back and think, what do we need to change to get to our next level of excellence? Because the best way to predict your future is to create it. At A.B. Combs, I, as a leader, had to picture the school being the best in the state. I had to picture that first before I could ever go and inspire the vision to other people. That's why having a vision of where you want to be and how you're going to get there is so critical to moving a school forward. So I want to ask you, if you, this was a question that we posed to our stakeholders and our stakeholders were our children. We asked this question to our students, to our parents, to our teachers, to business leaders and university professors. If you could create your ideal school, what would it look like, sound like, and feel like? Talk to one another. If you could create your ideal school, what would it look like, sound like, and feel like? Let me hear you talk. Talk to one another. So we'll pass the microphone. There were several people in the back that didn't get a chance to share the first question, so I'd like to give them an opportunity to answer this one first. Thank you. At the very back, if you could create your ideal school, what would it look like, sound like, and feel like? Hello. And please stand. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, if I could create my own school, it would look very welcoming. Even if it's small, that doesn't matter. But it should um, be secure enough 
For the children, it should sound like happiness. There should be happiness, happiness to learn. The children should turn into lifelong learners, not um, just the learners for the sake of education or degree. They should be lifelong learners. They should come to know the ways that can help them uh, in lifelong journey, just not book knowledge. It should feel like united, united and some place where people can feel that they belong there. Thank you. Thank you. Someone else will do one more for the sake of time. We have hands up here as well. Thank you. Hi. Uh, if I relate with myself, then I would say the school, if I build, uh, then it must be a fun learning place for kids. It should not just be a study place. It should be a happy place for the children that they should come with the happy faces and enjoy their learning process. Thank you. Schools that are happy, welcoming, challenging, helping to prepare children for, for life, not just academics. That was the same feedback that we heard almost 25 years ago as we started to transform our school. So I would challenge all of you to go back and ask that question. Our students wanted teachers who loved them and who would forgive them. Our parents wanted um, teachers who would know their children, their hopes, their aspirations. Business leaders wanted us to prepare our students to be able to embrace the challenges of um, the world, but they wanted them to work as teams and to be prepared to come to work. So there was a huge list, and we took all of that, and we started to create the first leadership school in the United States of America. So we'll, we'll go to the next slide. The next slide. And A.B. Combs Leadership Magnet Elementary School was born. So let's listen as one of our students shares exactly what happened. One more time. What is the A.B. Combs story? Hi, I'm Ryan Lee, a former Combs student, and we've been asked that question a lot. Well, it all started before I was even born, but let me try and share a few highlights. In 1998, A.B. Combs only had 300 students. Our test scores were low, nobody was applying to attend our school, teachers were unhappy, and our hallways were dull. This was the year Miss Summers was assigned to be the principal. At that time, our school superintendent challenged Miss Summers to make A.B. Combs more attractive to families in the area. With no extra money or resources to make it happen, and only one year to do it, she didn't know where to begin. But like Albert Einstein said, in the middle of difficulty lies great opportunity. Around this time, Ms. Summers attended a presentation of Dr. Stephen Covey, the world-renowned leadership consultant in Washington, D.C. He was speaking about the seven habits of highly effective people. As she listened to him speak, she thought, I wonder if you can teach these habits to little children. At the final break of the day, she mustered up enough courage to ask Dr. Covey this question. Do you think children as young as five to 10 years old could learn these habits? Dr. Covey responded, well, I don't see why not. If you do anything about it, let me know how it goes. This was all the inspiration we needed. When Ms. Summers returned to Raleigh, she spoke to some of the teachers about her experience and the idea of a leadership team began to take root. She also talked to students, parents, college professors, and business leaders and asked these questions. If you could create your ideal school, what would it look like? What would it sound like? What would it feel like? Every idea screamed leadership. It was at that moment that our transformational process began. We became the first leadership elementary school in the nation, using the seven habits of highly effective people as the framework for teaching leadership development. Students began setting and tracking academic goals. Achievement scores began to climb. Our hallways took on a whole new look and every student was given the chance to be a leader. Before we knew it, A.B. Combs was featured in Dr. Covey's book, The Leader and Me, 
and people started visiting our school from all over the world. Since then, our journey has been exciting and challenging, but most of all, rewarding. We have been recognized by the U.S. Department of Education and have received many national awards. In fact, we're the only school to be named the National Magnet School of America twice. As great as it is to be recognized, the best award of all is being part of a school where we are loved, where our ideas matter, and where we are celebrated for who we are and what we believe. So this is a glimpse of our story, and we're not even close to an ending. In fact, our story isn't really a story after all, is it? It's more like a chapter. A chapter in a powerful tale with unlimited potential. As you share what you have seen and experienced today, think about the stories. Our chapter, your chapter, and the chapters that will be written far into the future. Because what I know about this leader in this story is that it's far from finished. We are lucky to have started the narrative, but our challenge to you is to pick up a pen. Be a part of the story. Join us in leading children as they learn that their ideas have power and that their words can forever change the world. Thank you. There are currently over 8,000 schools around the world that are implementing the Leader in Me that was started at A.B. Combs Elementary. A.B. Combs is also recognized as one of the most award-winning schools in the United States of America. I don't share that with you. Thank you for the applause. That's so kind of you. But it's not about that. It was about the mission that we were on to build the best school we could possibly build inside for our children. Someone said earlier, even if it's a small school or a large school, we create a culture where every child feels loved and celebrated every single day. And, and recognizing that it is character plus competence that is the goal of true education. Academics is no longer just enough. We have to have the, comp the character coupled with that to give our children the education that they deserve. As a result of the work that we, and the leadership that we learned, we aligned our eras and we started to create frameworks, frameworks of excellence that would guide us in what was the most important thing we needed to teach our children. So we looked at the th three things. We looked at our culture. How are we going to improve our culture? We looked at academics. How will academics improve? Within three years, we went from the lowest performing elementary school to the highest performing academically in our district in three years because we were so laser focused on these three things, leadership, culture, and academics. The typical approach, we'll go back to that slide very quickly. The typical approach is that we weigh one more than the other that we focus more on academics than we focus on leadership or culture, but we focused equally on those three things. We had to rethink leadership. This video that you're about to see was written by one of our students and produced by one of our students with the help of Franklin Covey. Rethinking leadership, let's watch.
Dr. Covey's definition of leadership is communicating someone's worth and potential so clearly they can insp they're inspired to see it in themselves. The paradigms and frameworks that we have in place, paradigms are how we see the world. It's our mental map. If we see greatness, we're going to find greatness. If we look for joy and happiness, we're going to find that. So our paradigms are the mental maps. It's how we see the world. We'll go to the next slide, please. Yeah. So transformation begins with a change of heart, not a program. This is a philosophy the leader in me is a philosophy that every child has genius. Every child can be a leader. Not some, every. And it started with the hearts of our teachers. Also the minds, but also the hearts. To love our children as if they were their own. And to work as hard for someone else's children as we also did for our own. That's when you go from good to great to extraordinary. Because you see, what we see determines what we do, impacts the results we get. I was challenged recently by a professor to, to pick an object to look for throughout the day. I selected a heart. So everywhere I went, I focused on looking for that. I saw a heart shaped like a leaf. I sh saw a heart in a stone that I was, when I was walking along a path because I, I was looking for that. How fortunate our students will be if we look for their genius and their greatness. And it always doesn't come through academics. It comes through art, music, dance, drama, kindness, compassion. So what we see determines what we do, impacts the results we get. Again, Dr. Covey's definition of leadership Raise your hand if someone other than your parents communicated your worth and potential to you. Raise your hand. I hope most of us can raise our hands because Joanne Kohler said to me, I see leadership in you. I think you would make a great principal. Never did I think that I would leave the classroom, but because she communicated my worth and potential, I started to perhaps see it as well. These are the four core, five core paradigms I want you to remember. This is what we look for in Leader in Me schools, that everyone, everyone can be a leader. As I watch the student ambassadors help us throughout the past two days, they are being leaders in social etiquette. Every, everyone can be a leader. Our leaders in technology who are sitting behind the, the computers right now, that is their genius, their passion. Everyone can be a leader. Everyone has genius in something. Change starts with us. We empower our students to lead their own learning by having a voice and a choice about what it is that they want to do. And that's how we keep children engaged in schools. That's how they'll put down their devices to be more engaged when it's about something that they're excited about. And then how do we incorporate our families into what we do? In the entrance of A.B. Combs, you see these words. You are seen, you are known, and you are loved. That is the first message children see when they get out of their cars and enter our building or the buses or when they walk. This was, this was me. 
in fourth grade with my favorite teacher, and so much of this work is a result of me having Miss Rose as my teacher. Every single day she told us she loved us. Every single day she said, it matters not where you come from. What matters is the size of your hopes and dreams and determination to make it happen. This photograph was taken in 1960. I want to even say the year. <laughs> but it was almost unheard of for all of us to graduate from high school. We were the sons and daughters of mill workers and cotton farmers. But you see, we had a teacher who believed in us, a teacher that instilled in us. It was up to us. Miss Rose was the five core paradigms. You see, this is not a program. It's a philosophy that was created by teachers for teachers. And that's what makes all the difference. So would you applaud Miss Rose so loudly she can hear it. You see, no significant learning will ever occur without a significant relationship. That's why your love for your students is so important. Because once they know you care about them, they will give their absolute best to you. We all remember our favorite teacher, do we not? At the count of three, let's call out your, your favorite teacher's name. One, two, three. Let's give them a big round of applause. Every child I have a lot of memories needs a champion. Child. One that's always stuck out to me, though, was when I was about 10 years old, and I was in school, and I struggled. And I, I didn't struggle with English, math, or science. I struggled holding still. And I would try to listen and focus and process ideas, but I couldn't help myself. And to be honest, I would sit there and then I would just start tapping. And the students in the class would look at me and they'd say, hey, stop tapping. A lot of the time, I didn't even realize I was doing it. And then eventually even the teachers got after me and they would yell at me and they'd say, Clint, you have to stop tapping. It got so bad that I got sent to the principal's office for tapping. And he said to me, Okay, maybe when you go back to class, just try sitting on your hands. So I did. I went back to class, and when I felt myself starting to tap, I just, I did this. I sat on my hands. And that worked for about five seconds. One time I was tapping in class, and my teacher, Mr. Jensen, he looked at me, and he yelled. And he said, Clint, stay after class. And I thought to myself, this is it. I am done. Now, I've always been the type of person that believes that a single moment in time can change a person's life. And this was one of those moments for me. And I will never forget it. Watch what happened. So I was sitting there with Mr. Jensen and an empty classroom. He walked past me and he sat next to his desk and he said, Clint, come here. I want to talk to you. And as he looked me right in the eye, he said, No, I need you to know something. You're not in trouble. But I do have just one question that I have to ask him. And he asked, he said, have you ever thought about playing the drums? And in that moment, Mr. Jensen, he leaned back and he opened the top drawer of his desk. And he reached in and he pulled out my very first pair of drumsticks. And he held them in his hands and he looked at me and he said, hey, Clint, you're not a problem. I think you're a drummer. moment on, I've never put those sticks down. I've toured, recorded, and played drums all over the world. My whole college education was paid for with drumsticks in my hand. Just because of a single moment in time when somebody believed in me, and he saw something in me that I didn't even see within myself. And from that moment, I learned that there's a difference between being the best in the world and being the best for the world. Oh. 
there's so much I want to tell you, and there's so little time, but there are systems that we have in place. Beacon House has been an incredible partner with Franklin Covey and bringing this work to children in your part of the world. So I'm going to show you these systems, and you can learn about them later. So transformational systems that impact success. The typical approach is that we focus primarily on academics, culture, and a little bit of life skills. Out of balance. Out of balance. Leader in Me focuses equally on leadership, culture, and academics. So it's equal. They intersect. Okay, next slide, please. We teach our children the seven habits, which is a common language. Be proactive. Put first things first. Begin with the end in mind. We teach children as young as three years old. I was just in Guatemala, and a three-year-old child came up to me and said, I am proactive because I brushed my teeth this morning. You see, children can learn language that was designed for business leaders. And children as young as three are learning. These are the skills, the life skills, that will help them navigate through the best of times and the most challenging. So this is referred to as the habits one, two, and three or the private victory, what we work on inside out. Habits four, five, and six are outside. That's what people see when you start to be more effective, when you start to um, be less angry and more proactive. So it's a very wonderful system, and the language is key, everyone. Okay, the next slide. We also focus on not just the mind, but the heart, the body, the mind, the heart, the body, and the spirit of our children because, and our teachers. Because if one of these is out of balance, that's when we start to see misbehavior, sadness, low academic performance. But if we're focusing on all of those components, then we're going to have happy, successful students. So here is the core to this work. The five core paradigms at the top. Leadership, culture, academics. What we see determines what we do, impacts the results we get. And at the bottom is measurable results that guide our own continuous improvement. Simple as that. Okay, the next slide. And here is the best school improvement plan anywhere in the world. And I would defend this all day long. This is a one sheet of paper that our teachers use to guide them in getting the high performance they get time and time and time again. We also focus on the social emotional learning competencies. CASEL, which is a... Um, internationally recognized organization, has recognized the leader in me as one of the most comprehensive social-emotional learning programs anywhere in the world. Because we're focused on a ch child self-awareness, social awareness, responsible decision-making, self-management, and relationship skills. We're all about developing future-ready leaders not just for inside the classroom, but more importantly, outside of the classroom for life. The leader in me develops a whole child while giving them the skills to navigate their lives now and in the future. We saw this during the pandemic. Our children learned that it was their responsibility to continue to give their best even though they were out of school. You see, we gave them that little toolkit of the habits. We did better during COVID 
than we did the year before when we didn't, we weren't faced with COVID. Every teacher was standing up and giving their best efforts, their most distinct contribution, because everyone in the school is seen as a leader, not just the principal, everyone. Because studies have shown that learners with higher confidence are more willing to learn, challenge themselves, and have better resilience in the face of difficult transitions. It's all about a student's confidence. In fact, it's been quoted as the number one predictor of academic achievement. I've seen confidence all over the place for the past two days here. And that confidence transcends itself into the classroom and into the community. So what kind of culture are you creating? I want you to to be given the permission to go back to your own purpose, your own why you went into education to begin with. And that was to love the children, to love them, to help them be as successful as they could possibly be. So let's look at some examples of creating culture of love and academic success. This is what I want you to remember. Love is work made visible. Every single thing Beacon House has touched over the past two days is love, attention to detail. Absolutely. <laughs> Everything. A positive school culture is hard to explain, but you instantly know it when you see it. I'm going to use Beacon House again. They have a culture of excellence like nothing I have ever seen. And I'm not just saying that because I'm here with Beacon House. But I'm intrigued by the culture of this incredible organization because we want to create a culture like Beacon House for our children where students want to learn there, teachers want to teach there, leaders want to lead there, and we all want to be there. That's a culture of an extraordinary organization. So I'm not going to say too much. I want you to look at the culture within AB Combs. Loving our children, doing activities like dressing up like one another, a child showcasing their artistic ability, parents being welcomed into the building, children being recognized for their academic genius through technology, <laughs> students being recognized for kindness and compassion. These are leaders in that. A child dressing up as if what she's going to look like when she's 100 years old. Begin with the end in mind. We'll go back. There we go. And then our teachers also celebrating our students by dressing up and making learning fun. Because you see, teachers need this too. They need the same kind of culture our children do. Recognizing children's gifts and talents. Pedro here is the most incredible public speaker at five years old. Five. Because he's been given that opportunity. The signage in our buildings are colorful and the walls should teach the children, inspire the children and the teachers. Every morning, the children are greeted with a handshake, a hug, or a high five. It's that instant connection the moment they walk into the building. Also, children given opportunities to do a community service project, and this was to bag powdered milk for children in Africa teaching our children the importance of giving back, making a difference for other people, not just for themselves, but for others, showcasing their gifts and talents. Also, the traditions in our schools. Someone mentioned that when we talk about culture. Yes, we need to honor our culture. And every leader in me school ha should have that is part of their own DNA. But these are schools right here in Pakistan. Let's just go through the slides. Children here, where the photographs were taken several, I think just several months ago, 
when Bill McIntyre came to visit. And then ultimately, we want going to, ultimately we want to make sure that every child is seen, known, and loved. And when they do, they belong. They feel they belong. And that is the number one thing students want from us. They want to feel that someone loves them and that they belong. So think, we're running out of time. Think what is the one thing you can do tomorrow to go back into your school. Do one thing tomorrow to improve the culture of your school. As you watch this video, I want you to think, could it be as simple as this? The power of what we say and what we do. The principal asked teachers to take pictures of their students. So I'm asking all the teachers to take pictures of things that are important to them. And you are very important to me. Watch. You make me want to come to school every day. I uh, take pictures of things that are important to them, and you're important to me. Uh, you're one of the reasons that I want to come to school every day. Aww. And so, <laughs> of things that we love and things that inspire us. <laughs> so, you are one of the reasons that I come to school every day. I chose you because you mean a lot to me, and you're really important to me. So, I wanted to take your picture. It's okay. Take a photo of a student that really inspires us to be a better teacher. <laughs> okay. I chose you because you mean an awful lot to me, and I wanted you to know that. So, I was wondering if it was okay if I could take your picture. All right. Yeah, that's fine. It's because I'm short. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so for this project, I've been asked to take pictures of students that are important to me. And even though you're sassy, and we're both sassy with each other, um, you're one of the reasons that I love to come to school. So they asked us to pick students at Deja that are important to us. And I just wanted to let you know that you're one of the reasons that I love to come to work and that you're really special to me and um, I'm proud of everything that you've done, and so I wanted to take your picture. So let me explain to you what's going on. Hold on. All right, hold on, hold on. Let me Why is it in my face? Shh. Ooh, okay, this is good. All right, so let me tell you why I'm doing this. So Mr. Henry, he asked that, um, the teachers, he asked us if we would do a project. And are you here, Missy? Yes. Um, so the project he asked us to do was to pick a student who means a lot to us and who is really important to us and take a picture of them. And the first name who popped to my mind was Zania Smith. Oh my gosh! So I was wondering if I could take a picture of you. Sure. All right, here we go. Oh, no. oh okay. Gotta get ready? Okay, yeah. okay one. Oh, 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 you're getting higher and higher. Oh, slot me. Okay. Oh, oh. Could it be that easy? The connection, what you see determines what you do, impacts the results you get. The relationship communicating someone's worth and potential so clearly that they're inspired to see it in themselves. We only get one chance to prepare our children for a world that none of us can predict. 
So what are we going to do with that one chance? Thank you so very much for having me. Okay, we've got two questions. We've got two questions and we've got six minutes. How do we find a leader in our students? You look for it. You look for it. And you give them a chance. You find out what their hopes and their dreams and their passions and their aspirations are. And you give them a job. You give them a job in your classroom, and that's part of the framework of the leader in me. Every child has a role and responsibility. And then you watch children want to come to school because they have a responsibility to other people to be there. That's how you do that. And then there are kids, even in their teens, who can't manage academics well and can't be chosen for special talent like music or art. They understand competition but can't compete. How do we help them? I hope that last hour has inspired you to know the answer to that. You find their genius, you find those core, you go with those core paradigms. Everybody has genius, everyone can be a leader. Change starts with me. Everyone needs a voice and choice. As I have been in your country for the past three days, you have wonder, you are wonderful. You are the kindest, most loving, warm people I have ever met. And your children are that way too. Thank you again so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Excuse me. I oh, yes. have. Yes, I am uh, Eram Zuhail. I just wanted to ask that as we have heard and we've been hearing all our lives that leaders are born. So uh, if leaders are born and now we want everyone to be a leader and certainly they are the leaders. Um, do we produce leaders or do we create leaders? <laughs> we nurture leadership. Yes, that is the part. Thank you. Thank you so much.